and gentlemen, welcome on in. Here we have a little screen, and this is our chalkboard. Um, I've, so you can see we have our socials, we have our event list, and obviously we're keeping track of how many vendors to join the tribe, so we have this whole screen ready to go. This is your chat box over here on the left, so do as you may in the chat box. That is for you. That is your front row seat to whatever we do on the channel. You guys want us to zoom in a little bit? We can zoom in just a tad bit. I'm not gonna zoom in that much. But, yep, we zoomed in. Hold on, actually, yep, you know what? I am gonna zoom in a little bit more. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we get started, I just want you guys to know that every time we do a Tuesday news day, Every time we do a Tuesday news day, it is based on reviewing some topic of psychology that I've been gone that in like basic psychology 101 courses or um, or like if you, it's just something that you learn. If you're interested in education and learning styles and attachment theory and all this stuff, then that's amazing. That's great. If you guys are a little bit more in a specific type of, of, of theory or like a view, a perception, right? Because psychology, the best part about psychology is that when you review um, a topic of psychology, it's really based on your viewpoints as a theorist, right? Because most of these models these descriptions, these questions that are being made is based on a viewpoint, right? It's based on a date. At that time, this happened, right? And that's why research, when we talk about research, we say, hey, you know, like take something that is within the five year span of the year that you're in. The reason why is because you want empirical data, right? You want validity reliability and research you want all that stuff because that tells you how legit this theory is this question is this methodology is right and we've already talked about research again we did our video game version of research and reviewing research going over the methodology going over like participants procedures going over results a little bit uh discussion and how that ties in with the introduction the questions all that stuff we did that already now we're just going over topics of psychology and again full disclosure take this with a grain of salt take this and when you have school use that in the classroom ask questions so your boy poi talked about this and opened up the discussion that's 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 the power that you have right so today we're gonna go over learning styles to date um the most popular version of a, of the learning styles in conceptual form is neil fleming's seven learning styles but there's a reason for that over time each theory has kind of led to that point now again here's here's what i'm going to say about it neil fleming in mid 1990s created something that did make sense it was it was categorized perfectly however our learning styles today are so uh, are they're similar but what we use in our environment to learn about learning styles or to practice you know learning in individualism is the very fact that we use different tools nowadays than we did back then we have the internet bitch <laughs> so you know that changes the whole game now you're starting to see you know a combination of different learning styles here because the internet I don't know. The internet showed me a lot of different things, good and bad. So now you see a mixture of learning styles because of technology, right? We see 
advancements in the field of therapy and in the in the classroom right like we see advancements in learning because we have these tools right as much as we're saying we're becoming a tech age we're actually growing very quickly because of the internet because of technology that we have computers you know the way we teach in the classroom is different i used to go to um in graduate school i used to go i went to immaculata university which used to be an all-girls school full of nuns right their classrooms are so old the last time they were remade and and all that stuff was in the 80s i think it's old classroom but they have projectors and the projectors work just fine the chairs are chairs are okay they're 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 okay but <laughs> regardless of all those things you know the changes that are small but make such a difference in the classroom if we were using a chalkboard it would be very difficult unless the teacher is really fucking good to write out a whole lecture uh you know slide by slide on the chalkboard and it would be really annoying because there would be a lot of screeching I fucking hate life but nowadays you can get on a powerpoint you can draw shit out so it again in relation to what we're talking about here learning styles have mixed and mashed over the course of the past 20 years uh, 25 years technically since Fleming came out with his his seven learning styles so we're gonna kind of go back into history and talk a little bit about it so history boop, 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 boop. Oh. so this is a research article I found um, it's it's from an Islamic uh for international islamic university you know two two professors talking about like the history and conceptualizations and, and all that stuff of learning um you know i i just want to kind of like review the history real quick and then we'll talk about the bigger learning styles and then you can take that with you wherever you need so we'll scroll down here we go so first thing i want to talk about learning styles is that learning so first of all, learning and the capacity to learn um, is based off of, in the early 1900s, it was based off intelligence testing. They would test immigrants coming from all over the world to see how, how they could contribute, obviously, to society, but also to see if there are any geniuses or if they were absolutely just stupid and can't take a test they would they, they were the old the old 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 routine would be st to sterilize but now obviously as intelligence testing came on it was really just to get a placing in society so that's where it all started it's through intelligence testing uh benay and simon bro they they brought they created it in fucking fly they created it uh, their their intelligence test in presented it in England and then brought it uh, and then uh, I forgot who brought it over they brought it over to the United States and that started to be a part of the immigration uh, system so intelligence testing took place and then for about 50 years um, it was really just about you know, bettering intelligence tests, um, imaginary control. So also psychology at the time of the early 1900s was based on psychoanalysis. And we talked about psychoanalysis a little bit on stream, but it's um, psychoanalysis is about how your past creates your present, right? How the first six years of your life contribute to how you act, how you react, what your wants, your needs, all that crap. That has to relate to 
you know, you today. So, um, psychoanalysis kind of ran train in psychology because the unconscious mind is so like, oh my God, there's like so much stuff I don't know about myself because it's a part of my, it's a part of the unconscious mind. Like this is something that naturally happens comparison to when we talked about, so there's unconscious, there's pre-conscious where things kind of linger in your head, but you, you know it, like you remember, you remember things, but they're not like conscious or like full awareness where you could just bring it out in a second. You have to think about it for a second. So that's the pre-conscious and unconscious. You really, the unknowing, uh, the depth of the sea. You know, we talk about the glacier, like the what pops up is the conscious brain. Uh, the middle part is the pre-conscious and then the stuff underwater is the unconscious. So again, psychoanalysis takes over and you're going to actually see some key figures like Myers-Briggs and Carl Jung, who are, um, predecessors of Sigmund Freud. Well, Carl Jung was, and then came Myers-Briggs take on the personality traits and whatnot. But we'll talk about that in a second. Um, where we take place is behaviorism. So once World War II was over, Nuremberg Accords would take pl took place. Uh, everybody was starting to be more tight knit about ethics and boundaries and all that stuff with research. You know, w we start to see uh, B. F. Skinner, uh, behavioralist, uh, created the Skinner Box, which is where they had mouse and. You know through trial and error they would find their way around so through behaviorism there's trial and error and then obviously you scroll down uh myers briggs created her indicator her type indicator which is based off of of carl jung's uh, personality inventories so i actually pulled up the myers briggs foundation you could actually take a test with them um if you take the indicator and again guys when you take these tests these inventories and all that stuff just remember it with take it with a grain of salt right if there's something that you didn't know about yourself then that's cool take it with a grain of salt but don't you know there's some tests that are very uh some that are very crude some that are very straight up obviously you want something that's straight up there are quick inventories like the phq and the gad7 um, evaluating just basic depression and anxiety uh, those are like used to assess where you are now so the Myers-Briggs is really just like a an indicator of where you are now in comparison and, and, and how you however you want to you know compare that to you in the past or you thinking of yourself in the future you can always te retest yourself and these tests are uh, hold on, let me see. I don't think they're that expensive, but again, you have to take them at a testing center that's approved. So, uh, going to see a counselor, somebody has a PhD, are, uh, so some, a psychologist can give you these tests, right? They can give you a good, a, like a, an actual good inventory because they need to measure where you are now. So you can go see your, your primary care physician you can see your counselor whatever but for the most part uh they are accessible you know so again myers-briggs carl jung is based on personality types and usually there's um what the myers-briggs does is based on certain situations how you process the uh, situations your perception of the environment of the situation and your responses to that and that all collabs together and uh, again as you see here their best fit type <laughs> best fit so wherever it is wherever you land you land but it's on a spectrum uh let me see where um uh where is it the instrument let me see where it is it's based on introvertedness, extrovertedness. It's based on, uh, where is it? It's pretty much like a smaller version of the big five. You guys don't know the big five. 
measurement of just think of the acronym ocean so yeah right ocean so there is conscientiousness there is extrovertedness introvertedness that spectrum uh, there is acceptability there is neuroticism what's oh I'll think of it in a second. I'm sometimes my mind flies out. All right, so we're is it? pen and pencil. Oh, you can do it online as well, so you can find it easily. Uh, but pretty much in the end, it's um, it's about finding how your personality style can relate to your learning style. Or you could measure learning style based on personality. So that's what the Myers-Briggs type does. And it's really nice. You can access it anywhere. Um, I'm going to find where the measurements are. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously different ones based on, you know, your age. But anyways, self-guided feedback system, which is good. That That's really good because then you actually can be the professional and you can really, it, it means it's easy to understand the results. So, all right, so we're going to take it on over. Um, Again, personality is a part of that psycho uh, psychoanalysis realm. So Carl Jung finally had something with Myers-Briggs that, well, they Myers-Briggs did her separate thing, but it was really based on how personality relates to, you know, your learning type. So once psychoanalysis kind of ran down a little bit, behavioralism took over and behavioralism really lasted about 20 years and you know then people kind of picked it up and the small things kind of became improved and whatnot um then what took place in like the 70s and all the way through the 90s is cognition uh how the way we think uh relates to how the way we think has to do with how we behave so thinking really organizes our behaviors before it was our behaviors and that's it. And how our thought, pretty much emphasis on action rather than thought. And then this is the other way around for cognition. So, um, we look through a cognitive style profile. So it started off just understanding one person and the individual, and then it started to be more grouped together it started to become a little bit more data to emphasize validity in what they're trying to measure. Sometimes a lot of these different scales became thicker and thicker because, you know, you want to start somewhere where there, people are in agreement. you have good, you know, data to support these inventories, and then you can build up from there, you know? Um, and so as we get a little bit further down, um, then we get into the 90s, the 80s and the 90s. Um, I don't know if you guys know Kaufman, but he is pretty much the god. He's the god of learning. And um, he also was a part of, he was a part of something else in, in regards to intelligence, but I think he more took a educational stance on um he took more of an educational stance on 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 intelligence so he kind of helped develop you know the the basis of learning in regards in within the classroom and then eventually there's felder and silverman again the, the learning styles that we use today uh
and that's about it. Pretty much it's Bloom's Taxonomy, which talks about, um, what is it? Visual, it's uh, visual except, where is it? It's visual. The, the seven learning styles um, is a part of Neil Fleming's learning styles, but uh, an older psychologist, you kind of, this is backboned off of, was able to have three of these. So it was what, visual, what? Can I zoom out? Oh my gosh. So it's visual. It was. Oh, uh, it was emotional. And then it was uh, kinesthetics. That's what it was. It was visual. It was emotional. Um, how, how well can you learn through emotions and so forth? Or understanding other people's emotions and so forth to kinesthetics and then Feldman kind of took it a whole nother step up so Feldman said okay well that's in, that's also true but there's also musical obviously through um, Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence there has to be other ways in which people learn right intelligence doesn't always mean Intelligence is pretty much a spectrum, right? Right? So, through how we measure how good somebody is in a specific area, we should have multiple areas in which people can prove that they are higher in some areas compared to others, which is what typically intelligence testing takes, over, uh, takes on now. I mean, G factor, which is pretty much that there's a singular intelligence and that's that, is pretty much an old thought. And that's a very old way of viewing uh, intelligence, but I digress. We could do another lecture another day on intelligence. <laughs> but for today, we're just talking about these seven styles. So do you guys see anything that you can relate to? So we have visual uses images pictures colors and other visual media to help you learn the colors help spatial organization mind maps right you can you can pretty much map out you can see everything in front of you so that allows you to create mental images uh to stow away right or maybe auditory through music I don't have this I, I I'm more of like um, a specific type of beat in the moment type of guy but we also we can tell the differences between musicians um, lyrics people that are more lyrical uh, poet poets are actually very high in auditory uh, music because they use the description the lyrics as kind of like that visual thought process right? so auditory oral verbal you understand from the words that you read and through writing right because when we write things down we actually remember things a lot better uh, when we say it out loud we actually learn things a lot better so perhaps those these people are masters at their masters at their craft at writing things down, making lists, pros and cons, doing papers. Fuck, over test. Well, maybe they might be good at tests, maybe not. But they're more likely to have lists and stuff around so that they can keep track of things. Kinesthetics. If you were grown up to doing sports and stuff. Fucking going out there doing your shit. I you might have a you're more likely to pick up things using your body. So um, if you use visual objects, if you were able to pick things up 
you're able to, like, I don't know, let's say, uh, throw a football, right? If you, if you know how to run, then you know how to run with a football, right? If you know how to, you know, if, if you, if you're a, used to physical contact, then you're used to those heavy sports. Um, if you're learning how to breathe and like emotional stability, then you might learn how to do body scans and feeling it out, feeling your energy within, you know? Um, so, you know, I think a lot of people are mostly categorized within kinesthetics because I think when we're young, we have all this energy and all of our energy is being used for multiple different things. Um, if you have kids that are not doing that, then you should probably hop on that shit. Kids got to experience multiple different things. If they don't like it, they don't have to do it, but they have to try things, right? So they can learn through their body, right? Logical. So this is, this is based on like, obviously reasoning and systems and logic and all that stuff. But it's crazy when we think about logic in a mathematical terms, then we're, it's actually pretty cool because we're actually calculating how our actions reflect our environment or how our environment reflect our actions, right? Our thoughts are, how our brain works it's all math in some way and that's the best if 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 you're one of those people that learn better when looking at numbers when looking at the fine detail then you might be really logical when it comes to certain things i mean obviously if you're good at one thing you probably you probably have deficiencies in other areas but there's always that one area that you always strive in, that you always do well in, no matter what. It's just about thinking about what worked with you in the past and what works now. As an adult, you might have learned to accumulate multiple different learning styles. Compared to if you were growing up, you probably specified in one area, two areas, three areas, if you're that good. You might have specified those areas because they helped at the time, right? And sometimes those change. Social, interpersonal. When we, we, we call ourselves uh, homebodies right now, but there's a lot of homebodies that are extroverts and just need to go outside. Some people say they're introverts, but they're actually extroverts, right? Sometimes people change and they go from being extroverts to introverts as they get older which usually happens. Social, interpersonal um, learning is, is, is key. If you learn better with the group than you do on your own, that's a thing. So completely understandable. Uh, working in groups, in you're better at working in groups. Maybe a, a, a key role model, if you've really exceeded within Connections, right? Intrapersonal. So, like, thinking about yourself within, uh, you know, laying it all out. Emotionally, you, you're, you're stabilized. You've, you understand what your interests and your desires are, right? You know, sometimes, again, this is what we talk about, introvertedness. If you're very specific to being with yourself and again, you're going to take things under your own hands. You're going to try to do things yourself, you know, do it yourself. People, they're usually more interpersonal. So was that all seven visual auditory, verbal, physical, legit, logical, social, and solitary. Yep. So the whole premise, the whole premise of having these learning styles is so that we can, it, a taxonomy is a categorization of something. It's, it's, a, it's creating categories based on the system, right? The system is learning. 
categories being, you know, how people learn as a great example. So for these uh, learning styles, again, made in the mid nineties, again, there's a lot of data that supports that, you know, people actually have multiple different learning styles and you know again with what we have today to help us learn it changes the game just a tad bit when it comes to data but you know i digress some some things stay the same some things stay the same if you were to look at i'm sorry i'm itching my nose guys i gotta get like a you know what I need? I need a filter. I got a filter down here. You know? Anyways. If you were to look at this, this list, and categorize yourself, how, what, what helps you learn the most? Would you say that you have at least two or three because I do better on my own because I have to figure out my limitations, what I need to do, where my comfort zone is, right? What social, I need people to help me with things, right? I can't do everything on my own. Um, I do like interacting with people and figuring things out with others. I try to contribute the best way I can. And if I can help ex if I can help in any certain way, I'm I'm for the people first, and then I'm for myself, right? Obviously, we have to flip that around sometimes. You got to worry about ourselves, then we can worry about a group. But I digress. I like I use both. Ma I would say logic in the basis of emotional intelligence, but logical can be a whole spectrum, right? You know, numbers is not my thing, but I might find. A little bit closure when it comes to having one solution so I would say math like I, I'm my basic understanding of math and how things lead to another thing you know formal thinking I think I would say I have a little bit of it but it's not my number one physical would be like a number two physical is number two for me I've grown up with sports I've done nothing but trying to keep my body in shape so I can continue to live my best life, right? Sometimes I eat just nothing but takeout and then sometimes I go and I work out and I try to have a good schedule. So when it comes to learning and picking things up again, it's easier for me to do that because my whole life I've just been playing sports. Uh, but not everybody has played sports in college and not everybody did sports in high school or even now like that again that's my preference that's my number two verbal I would say yeah I when when I hear things out loud I say that I, I grow to the conversation, I would say. If, again, this goes with interpersonal communi interpersonal learning style, is that, you know, the verbal, how things sync for me, like I would say it would be like a number three for me. Hearing things out loud, writing, eh, I type papers if I need to. Auditory musical, nope. I am I, I I suck at dancing as you guys know, but you can make me dance if you uh, If you redeem your try points, I'll dance for you, but it doesn't mean I'm good So there you go visual spatial, you know visual learners number one And there you have it Again, we were just gonna go over the basics of learning styles. I did find an article, and you, if you guys wanna see what Carl Jung looked like, looked like a fucking boss. Check this guy out. Look at that guy. He's just fucking savage. Bro, this man knew how to smile. He had a good fucking smile when he 
when he was with us. He was with us. Probably best dancer? Aw, oh, Skater, you're just saying that. You're just saying that, motherfucker. Well, you can make me dance, and maybe I might convince myself. I don't know. This guy looks like he could dance, bro. Like, add add the shaders. Add the shaders on the glasses, bro. He, he's lit. He's fucking ready to go. Carl Young, everybody. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's Tuesday News Day. Okay. So, let us... There was one more thing I wanted to show you guys. Ah. So, I, 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 I pulled up to this article about... Um, it's from Vanderbilt University and it's like this it's kind of like a, it's a report. The best way to put it, it's a, it's a report to say, to have like a review on learning styles and where we are now. And this is on 2011. The matching hypothesis is based on matching a learning style with a teaching style. And they found that not every, this might not be the case because when it comes to those who have trouble learning in classroom, sometimes it's matching it, matching you, what works best for you with what works best for you with, I'm sorry, I reversed that what works best for me, different from what works best for you. That might not always be the case. So. I, they saying, they're saying that, you know, the findings are just not, they're just not specific and, and evident yet. However, I do think we take this with a grain of salt that some people are, they have difficulty learning over others. Learning can be very easy for those who are gifted compared to those who are struggling and have like ADHD and you know, fucking hate sitting still, you know, like it, for those who, you know, think of education as a joke, like kids that think education is a joke, you know, it's also, there's motivation that's involved with learning. And we have to always th uh, consider that when it comes to yourself, when you, when it comes to being better at your job, being better at life also has to do with be, having the motivation having that drive that thought to fucking push forward and if it's that's not strong enough your learning style isn't going to be as effective or learning styles so grain of salt everyone again predictive validity validity means that it's measuring what it needs to measure predictive validity what they predicted what had li little support in the data so again this has to do with what we talked about visual oral reading writing kinesthetics all that stuff you know again more modern understanding of these these different learning styles these inventories of understanding and th from personality to just like a, a mass category of learning stuff. The difference here is that we live in a present day where there's new things that help us every day. So when it comes to, I think there is some reliability in this article saying that, you know, this, the modern day, the modern age is different from the nineties. However, you know, there are new, like, there's new data that comes out every year that supports that, you know, being a little bit more integrative with your approaches is probably the best way to go because everybody can get a little bit out of it. And you can learn from people just by talking with them and observing them, obviously. Reviewing test scores doesn't always mean that you're the best student or the worst student. And we have to remember that because when we take tests, like when it has to do with testing, I was, I was terrible at testing. When it came to like standardized tests, fuck that dude, hated that. But I, when it came to creativity, 
when it came to being able to express myself in the way that I want to express myself, I had no problem with that. And you have to understand, for y'all who are bad at tests, better at writing papers, or worse at writing papers, better at tests, y'all are different, but that's what makes us human. That's all a part of human development, and that's all a part of personality. That's all a part of the things you learn, and that's all a part of the things you will learn. So consider all these kind of tips and tricks of you know what it means to have a learning style because it doesn't always mean that you're always associated to one category it means that these things could pertain to you so what do you think sounds about right okay so when i have to describe how i learn or what works best for me now you know now you fucking know. So, what it has to do with therapy as well. And we, we don't even talk about this because, you know, I feel like when we talk about, like, education, we talk about being in school, right? No, when it comes to counseling and understanding your emotions, not everybody's going to be good at that. So, it means that in order to express yourself or to, you know, integrate your emo emotions with I'm sorry, I, I thought I heard it echo. What it has to do with integrating your emotions with your learning style, it, use what you know. Don't say, don't do anything, don't say anything that you don't know yet. Use what you know and then build from that. Build into other categories of learning styles because you don't want to stay, you don't want to be, you know, obviously. You don't want to settle, right? So that's pretty much it for today. Um, anyways, I want to appreciate, I, I appreciate y'all sticking around for the, uh, for Tuesday news day today. Again, we just go over a small topic of psychology and, and maybe per, it pertains to you. Perhaps it might pertain to somebody else, you know, it doesn't matter. Take it with a grain of salt. I will have some of these links up on the Discord. So if you're not a part of the Discord, join the Discord. So you'll be a part of a lot of our discussions. We have um, a new discussion question every week. We have Psych News. So I post all the stuff that we do in the Psych News. Um, we have announcements, obviously, we do polls, uh, we obviously are in the Discord to play video games, so it's a great community, join it, be a part of it, um, and we have these questions and things that you can be involved with. Um, and we're going to start giveaways very soon on the Discord, not through Twitch yet. Once we build a little bit, then we could do live giveaways, but we're going to do our giveaways on the Discord. I think that's that's probably good for now. Uh, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate y'all coming by and joining us for our discussion today on learning styles. I hope this was helpful for you. It was hel It's always helpful for me to review and go over like the different perspectives of individual topics because psychology is all a part of it behavioralism cognitive behavioralism cogn just cognition specifically um per uh, psychoanalysis gestaltian uh reality you know existentialism like th these are all different perspectives of psychology that contri contribute to this well of knowledge right that's what it is it's the water that we drink from i hope that we can drink from from the well of knowledge <laughs> right, that was kind of stupid i'm not gonna lie that was kind of stupid all right ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me let's play